33 percent of our guests have hit me in the face we need to have more guests <laughs> yeah. hi everybody i'm jim and i'm ryan and this is jackie hey and this is the concept crucible podcast and today we are going to talk about school sort of jackie what are we talking about we're talking about sex. Let's talk oh. about sex, baby. Let's talk about you and me. I was pointing. Now let's, I'm nervous. Now I'm super <laughs> self-conscious. Let's, let's get some copyright... Uh, per, or not copyright. Let's get some copyright permission. In no, no, it's, oh. it's, no, no. It's a cover. It's oh, a cover. Okay. It's fine. But yeah, we're talking about sex. Specifically, the sex and health guidelines in mm. the new Ontario school curriculum. Which Jackie has... In front of her. Geekily printed out the elementary school. Now, curriculum. first, first, I guess, is the street cred. Um, neither Ryan or I have children in school. Uh, we don't actually have children at all. That we know of. <laughs> I wouldn't... Never mind. Um, but we spent a lot of time talking about ethics and talking about sort of rights and respecting other people. But, uh, no. No, ac- no actual little people. No, oh in god, the no. System. I have nieces and I love them and they're in the school system. And I think this will be really good for them. Mm. But uh, how about you? We have four in our household that are in elementary school. So next year, when this curriculum is implemented, there will be one in grade one, one in grade three, one in grade four, and one in grade six. So you basically like, get the whole gamut. Pretty much. Yeah. We're going from genitals to, what are we going to in grade six? I guess, orientation, that kind of thing. Nice. I think. And you yourself are studying sex, marriage, and the family? I am taking sexuality, marriage, and family studies. It's focusing on the sexuality part. Not the marriage part? Nah, sex and relationships is kind of my thing. Fair enough. Anyway, I guess it's time for our icebreaker, which is, (laughs) who is your first crush in school? I mean, a lot of the complaints around the, 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 the sex ed curriculum or the, or the health curriculum have to do with um, sexualizing or, 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 or romanticizing children too early in the sense that they are being introduced to ideas which are foreign to them. Right. And which they should not ever know about until much, much later in life when they are completely unprepared for them. Right. As I, was, I was completely innocent, obviously, because I didn't have this in school, so mm-hmm. none of us no, knew about it. Anything. I eat nothing. Storks. Storks all the way down. Storks, cabbage patches, and chanting, apparently. Chanting, yes. But, yeah, Ryan, who was your first crush in uh, school? The first one that I can remember, or the, the furthest one back that I can remember, is probably grade three. It was a mm. classmate named Barbara. Um, she was my, my first crush. And my first kiss, although it was a peck, so it was, it so was scandalous counts. at the time. But still, like, innocent. Did you get any Pokemon cards for it? The grade three, there was, I don't think there was Pokemon at the time. Mm-hmm. Grade three would have been, what are you, seven at the time? So I would have been in, in, it would have been 92 or 93, which I yeah. don't think. No, no, you haven't yeah. Pokemon cards yet. No. Yeah. How about you, Jackie? I, the first one I can remember, I guess, was grade two. And the new boy at school, Danny. And, uh. I don't remember how it came about, but somehow we we went for a kiss behind the snowbank and got caught by a nun. Nice. I'm glad you're here. I just like <laughs> I just like the snowbank side of for some reason it's like this is very Canadian. Yeah. <laughs> behind the snowbank, caught by a nun. Not nice. under the bleachers, not no. You know, no, 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 no. We need to build a snow fort. <laughs> yeah. Why? It's important. <laughs> I think the snowbank was already there. I don't think there was that much <laughs> mindfulness. In the That'd be pretty good, though. <laughs> Might hit on that in the next podcast. <laughs> um, mine, I think, I was in the second grade, and I noted that several of my classmates had crushes. I was like, I should have one of those. That seems like a thing I should have. <laughs> so I sort of, we were in an assembly... And there was a girl who was like two grades ahead of me. She was in the fourth grade. Ooh. And uh, no, 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 no. I never had any social or physical contact with no, her. No, I know. You were just going for the... Well, I mean, I mean, she had really cool hair. And I was like, she has really cool hair. I should be in love with her. Okay. 
I am. <laughs> and every time I would, I would see her in the hall or something, I would have that thought of like, oh, there's that girl I'm in love with. Huh. That, that's that that's it. it. No, no, there's no snowbanks. There's no nuns. <laughs> there's no, uh, you know, romantic initiation by an older woman. There's no, there's nothing. It's that, that was it. That was, that was like, I was just like, yeah, that's a thing I should do. I don't know why. I just think it's a thing I should do. I'm spotting a pattern here, though, in terms of like when crushes. Like, mm -hmm. I, it'd be interesting. Maybe you could comment in in the comment section below. Like for old, uh, older or younger than that, but like right around grade, grade two, two grade and grade three. three seems to be a common time where kids start to start to develop. Well, I mean that's when we that's when we start interacting with romance or with with romance in media. I mean, we actually a lot before that now, but like a lot earlier in life than that now. But well, I think it has something to do with our developmental stage at that mm -hmm. point. Too. Yeah, we're too. starting to realize that there's more to than just us. Mm -hmm. Right when kids are still five, six mm -hmm. years old, they're still very much just this little world. And they don't really realize that there are other people. I mean, there's people that feed them and stuff, and, and it's a different kind of. Them. It's it's yeah. also you're at that point where things that kids who are older than you or people who are older than you do are cool. Mm -hmm. I remember having that talk with Gwen, um, my my Gwen, my niece. Mm -hmm. She's like, why does my younger sister want to do everything I want to do? Because that is that is just how younger sisters work. Everything you do is going to be cool to her until it stops being cool. Yeah, and that's at our house too. Yeah, and it's 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 that notion that that you know that there are older kids who are dating, mm -hmm. and so that's cool. So you want to be cool. Yeah, I mean, you don't really understand what that means. You just sort of it's like Peter Pan, you know. You just sort of move around symbols and artifacts without really understanding them. I beg to differ. I don't remember the emulation side of it that because other people do it, I wanted to do it. I, I, I seem to re recall having distinct feelings like the giddiness feelings and the, ooh, you know, like girlfriend kind of deal. Maybe mm -hmm. she's a girlfriend. Mm. So I, I don't remember it being uh, because mommy and daddy do it or because an older person I see does it that I'm going to em emulate it until I feel it. I remember the feelings seemed to come first. It wasn't that I just chose her at random cognitively it was I didn't Joseph. choose mine at random she had cool hair <laughs> well true but and I, I don't know if it's a conscious I see it so I want to do it I think it's more the, yeah. that it's just kind of something we're absorbing yeah no 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 it just seems like the story you told Jim was a lot more deliberate and conscious of what you were doing right. oh, yeah I, don't remember I mean it, it also didn't that. really it also wasn't really meaningful in any way like, yeah. like in that I made I made no special effort to have contact with this person <laughs> I just I had decided that that was the thing to do. I was a peculiar child. That she was non-consensually your, the object of your Yeah, but it didn't... Desire. Sort of? But, I mean, there wasn't really any desire. It was just this, this huge abstraction mm -hmm. so that I could check some kind of mental box. So, since this did all happen around grade two and grade three... What do you learn in the new curriculum in grade two and grade three? Right. So one of the things is people are saying we are sexualizing children too young, right? That they mm -hmm. can't understand these concepts. It's too much too soon. They're too young. I barely understand these concepts now. <laughs> well, yes, there is that. But in that, like, just our stories. Mm -hmm. Like, we are... Not that kids are thinking about it in the terms of sex or sexualization, but we are thinking about it in terms of relationships. Yeah. Right? And that's more what the curriculum is talking about mm -hmm. in the younger grades. Sex does not enter into it as a thing. Like, or sexuality, basically. Well... I think the first elements don't they come up in, like, grade four with reproduction? Like, not actual... The act right, the sex. actual, like, sex act itself, yeah. yes. It's much later, but yeah, in, by grade four, you're already starting to talk about... Uh, well, I think it's grade four, from what I recall, uh, the actual reproduction of how... Because they talk about it with zygos, gametes... Right. Sperma, whatever. Spermatoa. Yeah. Spermatogenesis. So, 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 Sokatoa. That's, uh, for some reason, that's what That is, that uh, <laughs> yeah, spermatogenesis and menstruation are actually in grade five. Oh. Okay. So the actual how your body works, which that is actually something I'm disappointed in the new curriculum and the update. I was kind of hoping that would be bumped to grade four. You would think you'd want to get a slightly more ahead of the curve. Yeah, like yeah. when we're talking about menstruation, like yeah. there's kids that it could 
Yeah. Yeah. Could be. Yeah, you want to kind of get ahead of the curve. And this on this is all like designed that. for mixed class stuff too, right? This yeah. is not a, necessarily. No? Okay. I think they are still doing some same sex uh, teaching. Yeah, because I remember when we were in school, like it was always separate. Mm-hmm. Which means mm-hmm. guys didn't learn about menstruation except sort of in the abstract. It was for me. Right. I'm not sure how they're actually going to handle that one. I think it talks about it a little bit more at the beginning of the curriculum, but I could. I'm not going to. But yeah, regardless, what, what do you right what do you learn in grade three, grade four? Like, what, where's it, where? Well, so grade that? one is actually where it's starting, mm. um, and all they're doing really in grade one is talking about the proper names for body parts. All right. That's important to know. Some people even have a problem with that is sexualizing the children. We're not sexualizing it by simply telling somebody that that's called a penis or a vulva yeah we're sexualizing it by not telling them mm-hmm. yeah right? we are we are making it taboo we're making it taboo right mm-hmm. and really rule one for child protection is know your names for your body parts mm-hmm. right for them to feel empowered enough or to even know what they're yeah. talking about and by not talking about it we are starting that cycle of shame Right, that's my knee, that's my toe, that's my elbow. I don't know what that's called. Nobody wants to talk about that, so it must yeah, be bad. So it isn't a thing that we talk about. Mm-hmm. Right. So yeah, uh, grade one. I don't think most people have an issue with uh, kids being told the names of the genitalia. I certainly so hope not. I would hope not either. But they're also talking about just um, like we're talking about kind of the beginning, the seeds of consent to mm-hmm. in grade one. The actual wording from the curriculum says demonstrate the ability to recognize caring behavior, like listening with respect. Being helpful and exploitative behavior. So inappropriate touching, verbal, physical abuse, bullying, and describe the feelings that are associated. So we're starting to give them language on how to talk about this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. That seems really... So as a person who has been a schoolyard bully, mm-hmm. and I, I have been on both ends of that. But, but I, I have definitely... Yeah. As, a, as a large person... Um, mm-hmm. There were there were definitely occasions where I took advantage of the fact that I am physically imposing, mm-hmm. um, in order to I don't know just do whatever I wanted, and like not like take people's lunch money, but at the very least take liberties with people and make them feel unsafe. Mm-hmm. And I'm not particularly at all proud of that, right? But it was a thing that younger Jim did because he thought it was a thing that people did. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the notion that we are we are starting to train that out of children at an earlier age before I would have recognized it and mm-hmm. begun doing it seems kind of great. Yeah, and I think we've been talking about bullying a lot in schools already for <laughs> years, right? It doesn't really necessarily seem to have gotten too far in the way we're attacking it yeah. yet. Uh, I think we will have more luck in empowering the bystanders Right, the people around Mm -hmm. and being able to really get people to label those as inappropriate behaviors from early on. And like you said, the earlier gym might not have kind of of recognized those behaviors as something that wasn't great, right? The earlier that it's talked about. Yeah. I mean I mean empathy isn't a thing you're born with. Empathy is a thing that you learn. Empathy is a thing that you practice. Mm -hmm. Like it is a it is neat to think that everybody has has it to the same degree. But that, to anyone, I guess, who has interacted with human beings is sort of patently untrue. Yeah, and we're talking about that in grade two as well. So, like, and we're building on this every year, right? Mm -hmm. So explaining the importance of standing up for themselves and demonstrating the ability to apply behaviors that enhance their personal safety in threatening situations. So we're talking about speaking confidently, stating your boundaries, saying no, and respecting the right of a person to say no, and encouraging others to respect that right, and also reporting exploitative behaviors such as improper touching other bodies or other bodies and stuff like that. So that's even something as simple as like mm-hmm. me touching you pulling away and me trying to touch you again and saying, oh, it doesn't look like Ryan really likes that very much, Jackie. And the funny thing is, is that um, the way the language is written, it's not, it covers like sexual inappropriate touching, but it covers as well the bullying side of it. Yeah. So mm-hmm. they've had the foresight to be like, no, anything from tickling to, you know, just anything that's, Aggressive hugging, even. Yep. Yeah. Or there's, um, I think, a college humor video of, like, somebody who goes over and, like, massages <laughs> yes. the person or whatever at the workplace, and you can just see the actors. Or, yeah. You know, so uh, I, I, kudos to them for 
just like let, let's just throw it all in there in, in language that is and build on yeah. it. Right? Well, and it, it is it is it is all sort of the same thing. I mean, it's all based around respecting other people's mm-hmm. right to bodily autonomy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're not talking about sexual consent. Yeah. In grade one and two, we're not teaching them how to have sex or yeah. how to say yes to sex. Yeah, that's, that's what they have what the internet for. Yeah. yeah, the internet is is something. I just Google it. <laughs> All right, and then we get into grade three, which is where you hear a lot of the hubbub coming up out of grade three here. So we are talking about um, being in again a healthy relationship. What's healthy? What's not mm-hmm. healthy? And building on that again. Oh, that was a loud page turn. I'm sorry. Yeah, right. That's, That's grade right. three is curse is, you. Grade, grade three. three is grade three is, really three is where, kids, where things start to get loud, but. So, yeah, I, yeah grade yeah. three is one of the bones of contention that a lot of people that are protesting the curriculum have uh, because we're talking about visible and invisible differences. So visible difference would be skin color, hair color, eye color, yeah. um, maybe physical disabilities, mm-hmm. right? Someone's in a wheelchair, not in a wheelchair, those kind of things. Um, even the type of clothing someone wears or yeah. possessions they might have. Somebody has an iPod, somebody can't afford an iPod, has a nice bike, whatever. Those are all visible differences. Yep. We're also talking about invisible differences. So we're going to talk about things like learning abilities, skills and talents, personal values, cultural differences, beliefs, gender identity, sexual orientation, family background, personal preferences, allergies, sensitivities. So can you guys guess what... What people have an issue with in that list of stuff? Allergies. Do you seriously? You have no idea how many people <laughs> complain about the notion that their kids can't bring a peanut butter sandwich to school. That's true. Like, that is don't bring a peanut butter sandwich to school. <laughs> other kids could die. Um, no, I, I think I actually think it's really, really good and interesting. But it just, just this is not a co- point counterpoint kind of thing. We don't think that this is in any way bad. Even right. Even Ryan, who's a little quiet over there, isn't like, oh, those bastards. No, no. You, know, you know what? Uh, honestly, my first thoughts about that is is I barely understand that as an adult. This seems awfully ambitious to talk about in grade three. Well, the interesting <laughs> thing, though, the earlier we get to kids and the earlier we talk to kids mm-hmm. about this kind of yeah. stuff, they have an understanding that we don't. Yeah. Right. There are a lot of adults that can't wrap their heads around this the gender fluidity. Yeah. Or, or just general intersectionality. Of, intersectionality. Yeah. 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 Or that gender and the sexual orientation don't necessarily go together. Yeah. yeah. Right? That someone can be a trans man, but attractive to men. It's like, well, why didn't you just stay a woman? Or or, it's really confusing for people. Yeah. And those things are are separate, right? So even doing, even that is hard for people. I wonder if if this is all, like, like if this will, hopefully, I hope that this will also be useful in sort of uh, dealing with, or helping to deal with, I mean, issues of misogyny. Mm Mm-hmm. In the sense, like, like I, one of the things I recall vividly about many, many years of school and several unfortunate years of adulthood, which occasionally continue depending on what bar I'm in, mm-hmm. um, is the worst thing you can compare another ma- a young man to is a girl. Yes. And if we can, if we can get to kids early enough and be like, no, that's that's really not, that's really not on. Maybe you should. Uh, mm-hmm. I believe the technical term is shut the fuck up. Yeah, well, they're already... Or something far more constructive. (laughs) Hopefully. But we're already trying to quash those gender stereotypes Mm -hmm. in school. Like, my kids are already coming home and saying that they've talked about gender at school. They show a certain haircut, for example, and they talk about whether that's a boy haircut or a girl haircut. And the different debates that the kids Mm -hmm. say. And there's some of them are like, well, it's a boy haircut. And some of them are saying, well, you know what? It could be either... It could be a girl could have that haircut or a boy. And then my kid is the one that pipes up and says, or it could be both. Yeah. So. Proud mama moment. <laughs> but yeah, they're, they are already talking about those things. Now, gender identity, we are kind of talking about um, kids who may not feel comfortable in their own bodies, mm-hmm. right? So uh, we look at Jazz, for example, yep. which is a big example. She's a big example, a famous example, has her own book out. Yep. And we use that actually around our house oh, to yeah. talk about trans. Well, yeah, it, well, and there's a lot of different narratives that go along with it. Um, I say this knowing that, that I know a bunch of trans philosophers who don't like the the trap and other body narrative. Like, but mm-hmm. there's a there's a lot of, uh, you know, is is that notion that it's not that you're you're, you're trapped in a body. It's just that you are always this way. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, you you know, it is. There's a, but 
it, I think the thing that ma- is, is sort of regardless of rationale, people have different gender expressions. And mm-hmm. the sooner the kids can start recognizing that, uh, the sooner it's not going to be weird. Uh, I, I, so my nieces got into the iCarly. Hmm. I haven't, we haven't watched that. Thanks so the that. iCarly is actually, I, I sort of enjoy it in the sense that it's a weird 21st century sitcom. And I like watching it with them most of the time because I like watching whatever they're watching. But there was a, there was a moment in there when one of the characters disguised himself as an old lady to infiltrate a book signing and, you know, I mean, usual sitcom related <laughs> That's the things you want to sneak into, right? Well, and there's I mean, an old, so, so because he's disguised as an old lady, there's an old man aggressively hitting on him and he rebuffs him repeatedly and eventually reveals that he is in fact a man to this old man. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I'm like, okay, that's weird. That's, uh, that's not really on. And then the scene ends with, uh, I'll try and find it on YouTube, but the scene ends with the old man coming back with security and being like, that one there, she's a man woman. And so I got to have this great conversation with my nieces about why you should not ever refer to anyone as a man woman. Mm -hmm. And and one of them said, well, what if it's a, like a man disguised as a woman? I'm like, well then, you know what you should do? Absolutely nothing. (laughs) Just, just don't worry about it. But yeah, I mean that's like Carly. That's the, my they're they're Don't seven and ten. On it's it's aimed channel. at them. Like this is their this is their target demo, They're in the target demographic and they love it. And this is the kind of stuff it's showing them about gender expression. And, it is. It's used as humor, right? Homosexuality, gender yeah. differences. There, it's 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 humor and tokenism. We're not we're not. That's a whole other podcast. That's a whole other podcast. Right. Children's I, entertainment. Oh. Yes. But yeah, so in grade three, it's not like they're gonna. They're not hauling in, you know, okay, here, boys, let's show the children what sex between wow, two wow, men wow, 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 right? wow. Or, No. No, we're not, we're not saying, oh, oh, and hey, you're a boy, right? Do you feel like you're a girl or do you feel like you're a boy? We're not so challenging the not the standardized the kids, test. Right? <laughs> Sorry. We... They're framing it in a way that some people are, are yeah. have differences and differences are okay. So it's basically don't be an asshole. Well, and especially, I mean, given that in a class of 30 kids... Statistically. Statistically, at least three of them are gay. Mm-hmm. I mean... So, basically what we're doing is we're trying to make kids who do fall into these different descriptions feel welcome. Yeah. Which is important on its own. And kids who do happen to fit into our social little normal box... Normal. Um... <laughs> Are not the default. Are, yeah, or at least are not going to be like assholes. I don't even, right? even know that so, we'd want to consider it the default, but well, that's what, well, that's, that's what, that's what that we're seems ta- deeply that's what, problematic. That's what we're taught is the default. Yeah, right? yeah, that's yeah no, no that's what I mean. It's yeah. like um, heteronormativity or yeah. like that. You know, like it's heteronormativity. Not, it's, it's not that you're a deviant. It's not that this is the norm or this is the ideal. Or whatever. It's. I think that, and, and that is that is. I've definitely seen a bunch of objection written raised to that, it, it, mostly by uh, I believe the correct term is bigots, <laughs> like people who are like, no, 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 no. heteronormativity is right. Her, um, her, her, it's statistically the norm. Her, her, her. Yeah, yeah. Which great, but I mean, turns out that even if you have a majority, you don't get to oppress people based <laughs> on it. It turns out, Luckily, I don't. That's... You can check. That's a nice thing that um, if you can said. find something that says otherwise, please leave it in the comments. Uh, please make sure that it isn't might makes right <laughs> blog posts from Stormfront or just random Nietzsche quotes. Please, well, we get enough of those. I kind of like yeah. Nietzsche, but I'm not a Return of Kings kind of guy. <laughs> yeah, so I mean that's that's grade three. We're into grade four. Grade four, we're starting to talk about puberty. So this Good. is a change in the update. Is that started in grade five before? Now we're talking about puberty. In grade four. So we're talking about physical changes, body changing, um, and some emotions that might come up, and social impacts of these changes. Do we want to speculate the idea that they're moving it earlier because we're finding kids are moving it earlier? That's exactly what's happening. Okay. Yeah. Now, I'm surprised that they didn't move the menstruation and spermogenesis along with it mm-hmm. because of that. But they've left those in grade five. Hmm. But yeah, like this is a... Research-based, evidence-based, fact-based curriculum, Mm -hmm. right? And this actually, we have the oldest curriculum in Ontario, right, in in all of Canada. Mm -hmm. So this brings us, first of all, in line 
with other curriculums across the country. And actually now we're a bit more, we're cutting edge on uh, the consent and mental health issues as well. So yeah. we're actually going a little bit ahead of the curve on stuff. So across the provinces, uh, some provinces bring up a lot of these things earlier, yeah. even than our, our curriculum still does. Like, a lot of them we're kind of on par with. and Like ovary we, mobile over the cradle? You can get those. They're super cool. I can just picture like a maraca kind of yeah. shake the ovaries or the testes. Don't, don't shake, shake the testes. testes. It's, it's really totally don't. problematic. <laughs> what else don't. are we teaching in grade four? Oh, personal care. Oh, please. I really, yes. That, getting your kids to shower. I mean, if they can tell, if they can back oh that God. up in school, that's awesome. Yeah. Yes. So they're, they're talking about the importance of the bodily changes when it comes to things like showering. Here's, awesome. here's a tip for you kids. You're gonna smell. Yeah. Technically, you smell already. Like feet. It just starts getting a lot worse. <laughs> yeah, so grade five, we're talking about the reproductive system, like we said. Menstruation and stuff like that. Uh, so actually, this might be a good point to bring up. Uh, post that there was that I read uh, was in the local paper. Yep, we'll record. put it in the show notes. Yeah. So it came from the community edition. So it was a piece actually by Stacy Jacobs who does sexual education within the region. Um, and she was talking about a group, girl talk, a girl group that she did, so aimed at grade fives. Yep. So she said, a girl did come speak with me privately after the workshop to thank me. She had gotten her period a few months earlier, but did not know what it was. She was too scared to ask her parents and had come to the conclusion that she was dying of cancer because all she knew was that she was bleeding out of a body part that she did not have a name for and was not supposed to talk about. The relief I saw in this girl's face when she realized she was not dying is the reason I continue to do what I do. And this is not a lone incident, and it will continue to be the norm without a revitalized sentiment around the importance of sex education at an earlier age. I can... I can't... I was about to say I can imagine, but I cannot actually imagine... A ten-year-old. How completely terrifying that would be. So, and I was talking to my own daughter tonight about that, right? And she's like, we haven't gotten that in school yet. I was like, well, you're in grade five, so there's still a couple months, so they'll probably, yeah. probably talk about that. I said, but can you imagine if we didn't talk about that at home? And you started bleeding, and you had no idea what. And this girl, in this example, didn't even know what that body part was. And she jumped to the conclusion in her 10-year-old mind that she was dying. And couldn't talk, she was so scared, couldn't talk to her parents about it, because they had, by, I'm assuming, omitting it from conversation, Mm -hmm. there was so much shame around it that she couldn't even approach her parents. Now, I'm assuming we as, anybody who's a parent is going to hope that their kid will come to them with any problems and not come to the conclusion that they're dying of cancer or whatever it is, right? But this is the thing, is if we don't talk about this stuff at home or we don't think they're ready or whatever it is, that they won't feel comfortable coming to us. It doesn't mean these things aren't going to happen. It means they're not going to come to us. Yeah. And, I mean, part of, a lot of this seems to be designed about... about creating safe spaces and creating safe relationships so mm-hmm. that kids feel like they can. Right. It also seems like an interesting indictment on, like, where do you think the idea that this was cancer came from? I could see her watching House. Yeah, and who then, knows? And, like, or any kind of other medical drama. Stop or watching House and we ten-year-olds. <laughs> it's... But anyway, it's just the idea that her default is something, like, you don't just pick that out of the blue. You have some sort of experience or, or relation to it. And if if she's learning about, or she's deriving conclusions about her body based on, you know, something like that, you know, what other kinds of conclusions or what else would, you mm-hmm. know, somebody else teaching information to our kids, like the mass media or whatever, as opposed to an educator in a structured environment mm-hmm. with Why? adequate resources. With adequate resources in, a say, in, in, in what is attempting at least to be a safe space Mm -hmm. that values discourse Mm -hmm. yeah and in grade five we're we're going to continue the talk about um dealing it says dealing with threatening situations Mm -hmm. applying your appropriate living skills for example communication skills and like assertiveness Mm -hmm. refusal skills so again we're building on that foundation because consent is not something you want to all of a sudden throw at them when they're 15 or 16 
nice that we're building on those those kind of things. So so far, I haven't actually been keeping a, an official tally, but we've like maybe brushed against sex once, and we're only now hitting grade six. Like, I wonder what the actual problem. Well, is. I think I think part of it is is the notion of introducing things like gender fluidity and like like yeah. introducing. I mean, a lot, I I remember a lot of backlash about introducing notions of gay marriage mm-hmm. and, and homosexuality or bisexuality. Like, like, forget, we haven't even talked about, you know, bisexuality, mm-hmm. asexuality, pansexuality, right. uh, demisexuality. Yeah, like we still talk about sexuality in the binary. Yeah. Right? Even in this case, we're still talking about it as heterosexual. Yeah, like, like, like if, you are, if you are asexual, You're then... You're still invisible. You know, yeah. if you are bisexual, you are undecided. Mm-hmm. It's just a stage until you fully come out gay. Yeah, or or don't. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, that's like, a whole other podcast. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like there's there's a sense in which they like this this curriculum is still sort of it has a, it has a long way to go, mm-hmm. but we can't. Can you imagine if they were trying to throw in bisexuality and asexuality in here, though? Considering all the backlash no, like, like, and uproar just... that there's already been. <laughs> That, like it's 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 the ki- kids are probably ready for it. I mean, kids. Yes. It, it, it is parents who are who are sort of clinging to that notion because it isn't the education that we got in school. Mm-hmm. And grade five is actually where we talk about reproduction. Like, so when we yeah. talk about the body, like uh, the different functions, that's when yeah. sex kind of comes into it. Mm-hmm. So how these different things your bodies do, how they actually go to the reproductive. End of it. So grade five is really where we're interested. We're in introducing sex mm. as a concept, or at least reproduction as a concept. I mean, those seem those seem quantitatively different. Kind of like how it's more, and it's in a scientific way when yeah. we're talking about it at school, right? Mm. So the school's not taking away your right or your job as a parent to kind of infuse all this with your own personal values that you hope I mean, to f- pass on to your kids. I feel like also. If your kid's in grade five and they don't know where babies come from, then the school will at least teach them. Mm-hmm. Like that, that at that at that point, like I feel like by grade five you have hopefully been told. But yeah. if they don't know where babies come from, they I, should. I don't remember when I actually. I don't, I don't know when did your parents either. give you the talk. I never got the talk. I remember. So you're one of those I remember kids. a video. I don't, I don't, yeah, I, don't. I remember getting "Where do babies come no, from?" No, no, we had a book. I learned. Story. I learned. I learned when I was a kid. We had the talk, and they're like, "This is where babies come from." And I was like, "Oh, yeah," because I'd been asking about it. I was curious because yeah. I was an only child. So like, here's a book. I'm like, look, uh, so my friends have siblings. Can I have a sibling? And I was like, no. <laughs> I'm like, listen, but life is boring. She's like, here you saying. No. <laughs> Still no. Not, uh, not happening. Here's a book. Now, we do have books at our house. I think books are great, uh, and they're a great supplement to communication. Maybe we should kids, grab right? some of those titles and authors and throw some links in the yeah. show. Yeah. Notes. So some, maybe, some of our favorites. Yeah. Do yeah. you have any off the top of your head? Not to throw you we on the have, spot. We have, um, there's a series of three by Robbie Harris, and it starts off with It's Not the Stork. Oh. Um, which is age, ages four We were talking about the up. stork earlier. Yeah. Storks all the way down. That's, the title. <laughs> so that's for ages four and up. So we have that one. Then we have It's So Amazing, which is ages seven and up. And that talks more about the bodies and stuff like that. And the um, It's Perfectly Normal is the ages that's... ten and up one, which is great. Like they have some awesome illustrations and it's kind of a fun way to do it. Um, and they, they talk about like birth control and stuff in the later books. You have a, a, a guy standing there with a baby and going, but I pulled out. Right, so it talks about these different myths That's and amazing. stuff. The kids, so those books kind of, but you know, they s- they move between bedrooms, right? We find them in different different places. When I had sex on a pullout couch, yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. Now, and the thing too, just to bring up now, is we always talk about it in the terms of the talk. Yeah, as if it's something you're going to sit your kid down with and you know, listen, give them all the things. Listen, kid, let's talk about bases. <laughs> we don't have the math talk, right, and the. The science talk. And, uh, I feel like the science talk would be great. <laughs> Son, you've got some strange ideas about causality. <laughs> Is this about that time I broke that lamp? Because I totally didn't break that lamp. A lightning bolt broke that lamp. Uh-huh. I think it's time for the science talk. Science dad has a weird <laughs> voice. No, see, I see the first one is, Son, you think the world... 
It's full of solid objects. It's full of mostly empty space. (laughs) (laughs) I remember the first time when I realized that, that this is mostly empty space. And I was like, whoa! But it's solid! I don't get it! That would be the science talk. The science talk. Blow your mind. You should have the science talk. The the second one was was probably when I realized white light is comprised of red, green, blue. Like, the the Roy G. Bibb. Because I came from the uh, primary colors of blue, yellow, and... um, Red. Yeah. Yeah, I was waiting for you to get yeah, that. I was going to help. Blue, yellow, blue, blue, yellow, He's good. red. He remembers. In, uh, in the color, like painting and whatnot, but then right. for light, to get white light, you need red, green, blue. I remember that. I was just... Mind-blowing. Yeah, the great, opposite! Grade 11 physics was amazing. Grade 11? The science, the science talk. But you're right. We don't have the history talk. We don't have the literature talk. No, and sex and sexuality and how we relate to people and all that, these are just things that we talk about we communicate yeah. with on an ongoing basis with our kids right and when we integrate that in our day to day then I that's I feel like the, 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 that is part of the, the inherent difference is um, you can stop doing math <laughs> or reading Shakespeare or studying French which I think we talked about in the pre-show like School tries to make you not do that. School tries to make you want to do those things. Um, this curriculum is trying to teach kids how to safely and respectfully do probably the one thing in school that they will not want to stop doing. That they will, by and large, <laughs> most likely all of them at some point do. Most, most likely, most, of them anyway, most likely, and at some and point in their lives. and likely pursue extensively. <laughs> I mean, extra it, credit. <laughs> Sorry, young lady, we're needy. Grade six. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's good. That was going to a weird place. Yeah. So again, we're bringing up uh, gender identity, that kind of thing. We're talking about identity factors that affect the development of a person's self concept. So we're talking about things in the environment, maybe. Maybe we'll talk about media mm-hmm. at this point, right? Critical eye, those kind of things. Uh, stereotypes, body image, mental health actually comes into play here. So, yeah, we're talking about things that we're seeing and how they affect us and, yeah. and those kind of things, which I think is great to bring those up. Um, so kids are around 11 now at this point, just to have some context. Yep. Yeah. Um, so we're talking about personal skills, interpersonal skills, self-awareness, self-management, anger management, communication, um, how to avoid, manage conflicts, right? So all those kind of things. Uh, building confidence. We're talking again about the changes that happen in your body. So again, it's not just one talk. We're going to build on these, right? Uh, we're also talking about making informed decisions that demonstrate respect for themselves and others and help build healthier relationships. So, And they're talking, the teacher prompts about how does knowing yourself help you make healthy decisions when you're in a relationship? So again, we're bringing values into this. Mm -hmm. So um, those are where somebody might say, in my family, right? Whatever, those kind of things. So it helps them make those kind of things, being clear on what what you have, what you value. And again, respect for others and showing that you value their differences. Yeah. So just because something's my value doesn't mean that needs to be a universal value. A lot of this seems to revolve around the notion of of things like self-ownership. Mm-hmm. Which is good. I mean, in the sense that that's how you develop autonomy. Yes, self-respect, self-responsibility. Yeah, like you, you have to, and and part of you know having self-possession is realizing that other people also have that. So it develops your empathy. It develops your theory of other minds, and yeah. so that you can you can treat people accordingly. Yeah. So the building on that in the curriculum too. So we're talking about stereotypes, including homophobia, assumptions mm-hmm. regarding gender roles. And expectations, so we're bringing that up again. And it'll be a more robust discussion now at this point, because they're three years older. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? Uh, ge- sexual orientation, gender expression, race, ethnicity, culture, mental health, again, abilities, individual self-concept, social inclusion, and relationships with others, appropriate ways of responding. All right? So they get into, again, this is a prompt, so this is not actually like a mandatory part of the curriculum, but they're talking about... Uh, we need to make sure that we don't assume all couples are of the opposite sex. And we show this by words we use. So using the word partner, for example, instead of husband or wife. Yep. 
So a lot of what we talked about in the pre-show was languaging, right? We, oh, yeah. we want to give people the language to be able to to discuss. Well, and, and have that language used by people who are part of the you know sort of who, who are part of establishing norms of language. Teachers, teachers are much are I, I think are much better influencers than parents when it comes to establishing norms of language. Mm-hmm. I mean, in the sense that teachers all sort of work from the same thing, but teachers also work from a different position of authority. I mean, you know that the teacher's job is to teach you things. Mm -hmm. The teacher teaches you, you know, your French teacher teaches you the French word for fish is boisson. You don't go, oh, well, I don't really like that word. Fuck that (laughs) word. I'm just, uh, what is it? It's a boat. Uh, That's a box. It's a fish. Fish box. Box fish. Boisson. Boisson is a bottle, is a drink. Oh. uh, Like, like, you're, you are taking linguistic instruction from, from, from teachers already, whether you know it or not. Teachers are using words. They're teaching you words. They're like So, I mean, getting teachers to put these in use, it sort of normalizes them mm-hmm. in a way that seems entirely healthy. As opposed to having the, the heteronormative curriculum, which is all like Bob and Sally. Or, you know, Bob and Sally and their two kids who are Bob and Sally. Well, yeah, a lot of, and Junior. we talk about that in the earlier grades too, right? Families are a lot different. There's a lot of different compositions out there. Yeah. Some have a mom and a dad. Some have uh, two dads. Some have two moms. Some have one mom, one dad. Some might have two moms, two dads, like step families. We bring those into, mm-hmm. right? Grandparents, whatever. Some kids might be even have foster parents or whatever. I whatever. remember when, when I was a kid, the notion of step families and single parents was the thing that people thought about. Mm-hmm. We can't introduce the notion that there are human beings who have anything less than a healthy nuclear family. Even though most of the kids in our classes came from, either had step parents or single parents or they, their parent, like, you know. They You're talking about teaching to the ideal. Half, half sisters and stuff and like that. What they saw as the ideal. Yeah. And they're like, they're like no, 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 nuclear families, nuclear families. Because that's what we want kids to grow up and sure, want but, to emulate, right? I mean, when you're a, when you're a kid from a single parent family, the reinforced notion that nuclear families are normal mm-hmm. is entirely destructive. Yes, it and is, everything else is wrong. Yeah, like you are you are you are already you're broken out of the gate. It, it, it's destructive to the core. Right? And that's the same thing when we talk about sexual orientation or gender identity or any mm-hmm. of these things that someone feels they don't fall into that image of what they see everywhere in the media, magazines, TV yep. shows, friends, or whatever. Like, there's a reason why it's important to bring this up in school. Because mm-hmm. kids who feel like they belong are going to be, well, first of all, better at school, and they're going to be much Healthier people. Healthier people and contribute to society in a positive way, hopefully. Yeah. So, yeah, um, if we want to keep going here in the curriculum, we've got grade seven, which is another big, big uh, sticking, point. sticking point here. Because now in the curriculum here, we talk about explain the importance of having a shared understanding with a partner about the following. Delaying Ooh. sexual activity. So they do talk about delaying it. It's not really a choice at this point. They're talking about delaying sexual activity. Yeah. Um, for example, choosing to abstain from any genital contact, choosing to abstain from having vaginal or anal intercourse, choosing to abstain from having oral genital contact, the reasons for not engaging in sexual activity, the concept, concept of consent, how consent is communicated, and in general, the need to communicate clearly with each other, making decisions about sexual activity in the relationship. Yeah. So what I see here is very much an abstinence-focused curriculum. See, I don't see that. I actually see... Um... Instead, the idea of um, it's a way of positively combating against pressure. Yeah. That it, 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 it's okay I, to still delay it. Yeah, it, it's okay for you to not have to engage in it mm-hmm. in any form because it, like it's pretty pretty enumerative there. Right. Like, it's not just you know like at vaginal this point, intercourse. It, it goes like all the way from oral. Yes, to, and that's where people are like, yeah. but they're being taught about oral and anal sex in school, and at grade seven to boot. Right? Spoilers: like, they know about it. Yeah. Yeah. You point. can it, when you can tell jo- when you, when you're in grade seven, you can tell jokes about doing it in the bud. Mm-hmm. The problem with not introducing it at this point is that again, this is a research-based, evidence-based, fact-based curriculum. Kids are 
looking at oral mm-hmm. and anal sex as viable they, and more attractive alternatives to vaginal intercourse. First of all, they don't th- they think it's safe because they're not going to get pregnant. And they're looking at it as a way to still hold on to that virginity. Yep. So it's even the younger kids, right, that may be thinking of these as the alternatives. And we need to get to them before they're doing this. And again, we're not really shocking them and introducing something no, they have not I mean, heard I mean, before. Well, and one of the other things is, is we're, we are keeping them from right, and, and sort of helping them develop skills so that if they are pressured by older kids... Mm-hmm. Uh, who are more worldly that they they have the ability you know the the, the sort of self awareness and self possession to decline and 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 you know understand that that is permissible and what the what the risks are associated yeah. with it because we get into STIs and different things mm-hmm. like that and we're building on the stuff that we've talked about before about autonomy and respect for yourself my god it's like this right? is a comprehensive plan or something <laughs> Yeah, because one of the other things is identifying sexually transmitted infections mm-hmm. and ways of preventing STIs, including HIV and uh, HIV and or unintended pregnancy. Mm-hmm. Which I mean, if you were in the seventh grade and you have an intended pregnancy, um, something has gone awry. You have made a poor decision. I'm just going to go out and not that I haven't seen that on Mori Povich or Jerry I'm not Spray saying it, no. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm saying that I remember seventh grade gym. That was. Ooh, almost exactly 20 years ago. And uh, he was a fucking idiot. <laughs> he did a lot of things that were really stupid. <laughs> I misunderstood him. I thought you were talking about grade like, like, 12 gym, gym class. class. <laughs> and I'm like, Jim was a fucking... Your teacher was a fucking... No, no, no. Like, <laughs> yeah, I like, think we both my, did the same. Yeah. Myself. Like, oh, you, you myself. Jim, young Jim. Tw- and in the seventh grade... 20 years younger, like, Jim. Had I, yes. had I made a decision that would affect my, the rest of my life... I would almost guarantee that that decision would be deeply unfortunate. Yeah, 12 years old, making decisions. And when you're bringing up having sex at 12, this is another important point, is kids as young as 12 can consent to sex. Legally, yeah. Legally in Canada. And this is another point I keep hearing, and it's factually wrong. Uh, And I hear it from people who are supposed to be experts on it, or the people that are kind of um, talking about it. We've got a link in the show notes. Uh, So... Looking at the law, it says the age of consent in Canada is 16 years old. And that's kind of where people stop. And they go, it's 16, so why are we talking about having sex when they're 12 and they can't even consent? Because that's the adults. That's the only thing we care about. Yeah. So there are the exceptions, uh, close in age exceptions. So when kids are 12 or 13, there is a two-year exception. So a 14-year-old can have sex with a 12-year-old. A 15-year-old can have sex with a 13-year-old. When they are 14 and 15, there is a five-year exception age okay of exception so that means a 20 year old can have sex with a 15 year old and it, and it is, is legal provided that both parties consent consenting yes yeah. we're still talking about consensual sex and we're not talking about uh, power issues right so authority those kind of things like if you had a soccer coach who was 20 and 15 year olds on the team like those are different situations we're talking about two consenting kids here it's, without without any other entanglements right so there is that five-year exception. Once kids are 16, yes, they can consent to sex with anybody, basically. Again, without the other entanglements, except anal sex, which is still on the books as being age 18. you got to save something for later. <laughs> so yeah, so that's kind of an archaic law that's still on the books there. Well, it's, we need the butt police for that. Of course. Uh, grade 7, we're also talking about physical, emotional, social, psychological factors... Regarding sex, um, we actually talk about sex and desire a little bit. That, oh my goodness. Wait, the wait, reason wait, you wait. might be having sex when you're a teenager. Clear this up for me. Sometimes. Sometimes, yes. People make sex because they want to. Sometimes. Yes. I, so I this is actually it. something that we're talking about in school. Yeah. I would, I would, I would hazard a guess that, by and large, the people that are having sex when they're teenagers are not doing it for procreative reasons. But that's <laughs> the only time you wait until you're married. And Man, then, woman, yes. And then you... Yeah, dude, what if you're a lesbian? 
Then you, I mean, you can still wait until you're married because you, it's Canada. You procreate. That's how it works. Yeah, and there is... And sarcasm. <laughs> there is that argument. Some people, that is their family value, right? That you wait until yeah. marriage and sex is within the confines of marriage and it is for procreation only. So anything outside of that is to them immoral. That is a family value that they can still impart yeah, no, on nothing, their children. Nothing here seems to, to, go, to, to go against that. It just simply empowers children to make their own choices. Mm-hmm. So they can choose to go along with that, which presumably if you're parents and you have, you, you and, and that's a really important thing to you and you, you talk to your kids and be like, this is really important to us that you do this. And I don't think these are mutually exclusive things. No. Mm-hmm. I think you can talk to a 12 year old about the fact that you may feel sexual desire because spoiler, <laughs> they're probably going to. Yeah. Right, and That's you can have those lie. talks at home. Then, even if you do feel sexual desire, it doesn't mean you need to act on those desires or those mm-hmm. feelings. So, by bringing up desire in the context of sex, I don't think that's a bad thing. Well, there is one thing that's been at least noticed or noticeably absent in uh, what you've listed off. You might have missed it or whatever, mm-hmm. but I haven't actually heard any kind of just dis- um, discussion on masturbation. Oh, uh, would that come under the desire is, side of it? I believe. Sorry, I don't. I don't mean to backtrack. I just happened to notice. I think it came up a little bit in the pre-show, but it did. It's in either grade six or five. I have to. Yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to put you on the no, spot no, no. There, I know it's in here. It seems like if you're talking exactly. about sexual desire, but it, it comes. It comes in. It comes in pretty early in terms of yeah. It does, and if this was electronic, I could just search for the word. But control it's, F. Control F. But, but yes, it is in the curriculum, and off the top of my head right now, I'm a bad, bad sex educator. Uh, I'm trying to remember exactly where that is that it is mentioned no worries. here. Well, we will have both the full curriculum and the Cole's Notes articles from the news uh, <laughs> linked in the show notes, so but you yes, can check it, it out for yourself. It is around this area. Yeah, but it comes in around uh, around grade five. Um, oh, sorry, it's right in front of me. It was on the page I was on. Oh, it's also in grade seven. So it's in grade seven. The effect of physical masturbation, maturation. Sorry, that's maturation, not masturbation. <laughs> you just huckle me. That's what I do. I read some of a word or some of a sentence, and, I just, and then I just assume I know it the rest of it. It had ma and ation at the yeah, end. Clearly, so clearly we're just all about the mastication here. <laughs> but um, no, we should probably wrap up, though. I think the, the, the core of this is that the, the, there, is, <laughs> there is ostensibly here in Ontario another side to this that, that, is, that is protesting the, the curriculum very loud minority yes. on the, yeah on the basis of introducing concepts that they don't want their they want children to have um, trying to either you know state endorse values which I mean the state is endorsing values it's endorsing values of respect and consent and self confidence and these are things that hopefully we want kids to have well like you said the school is also already teaching values like sharing yeah Right. Uh, not beating each other up. Um, yeah. Not cheating is a really important one in school. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, they already talk about consent as early as kindergarten, right? It's like, oh, I don't think he wanted you to take that toy, right? Or he doesn't look like he wants it, you to touch him, or did you ask to do that? Or so mm-hmm. we're already building on those already. We're just putting it in. Yeah, the we're like like the, 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 we can talk conflict. about this, and this is a, this is an area of your life where consent doesn't just matter. But where consent is vitally important. Mm-hmm. I mean, where where a a lack of consent or a misunderstanding of consent can not just affect your life forever, but someone else's. And like there is there is really no other side to this. No, we kind of yeah. All... I mean, well, I mean, in the same way that there's no other side to vaccination, <laughs> there's no other side to climate change. There's there are people who are upset about it. But that doesn't make it not true. I mean, it, it seems trivial to say these are values that human beings should have, mm-hmm. and that we, as adults, I mean, I mean, and especially as as parents or educators, have an obligation to attempt to do our best to instill them in in, in, in people, not just in children, but in each other. Mm-hmm. That's nodding for those of you who are listening. They're nodding. Yeah. I said, mm-hmm. Yeah. At least I mean the vocalization. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, and really, I think the people who are so 
vehemently opposed to this curriculum, a lot of people I'm finding have not actually read it, mm -hmm. right? They have read an opinion piece that's based on something out of context mm -hmm. and then have just read that and taken something from that and then based it on on that instead of actually looking at the curriculum and the context in the curriculum. Yeah. Our listeners will be able to read the, the curriculum. Yeah, but, and it uh, seems big. It's 244 pages, but when you actually go through, it's broken down fairly nicely. You the, can sexy, find the, the sexy bits are relatively small. A lot of it has to do with like stretching and physical body movement and mass nutrition and, and, and nutrition and like mastery of your environment and things like that balance and yo know, the value of yes, yoga it is kind of a it is kind of thick thick but I, yes it is the whole health and physical education curriculum for grades one through eight here so i do have a uh, i do have a question for you as a as the expert on the podcast mm -hmm. um do you think that this is comprehensive enough do you think that they perhaps missed anything or anything that should be worked on because obviously they're going to put it into play and then a couple of years down the line we're going to have a chance to see what kind of effects it's having right. and have a chance to tweak it later on but right so our current curriculum is from 1998 mm -hmm. um, this curriculum is actually a slight revision on what was going to be released in 2010 and there was a very vocal minority outcrying and mcginty got scared and pulled it back so this is actually even already kind of five years outdated. They have added more of the consent and that kind of thing in yeah. here. So it is a little bit revised, which is good. Uh, so like I said, I would have liked to see the menstruation, that type of thing a year earlier. I would like to see, like you mentioned, Jim, a little more inclusivity, not so much binary. Yeah. Uh, it depends on how it's going to be taught too. Mm -hmm. Like we may not necessarily talk about sexual orientation in a binary and gender in a binary, uh, which will be good. Uh, I would like to see a little bit more of that specifically mentioned, right? Bisexuality, those kind of things in there. Uh, but I think it's pretty comprehensive. Like, sex really hasn't changed that much. Mm. Like, it is, it's a fairly similar thing to what it was when I've we were that. younger. I've read <laughs> it. Kind of I've, read, I've, I've seen um, woodcuts. But yeah, we, we, do, we do learn and we implement it. So I would like to see hopefully another update in five years mm -hmm. looking at how this is kind of played out and rolled out. I, mean, I wonder how the, the teaching of it is going to go. I guess I think the, the, the most important thing about it, I mean, in terms of helping children find their identities, mm -hmm. is... So I was... Uh, we, we, we had a, a, a little political debacle here in KW not that long ago, maybe, I don't know, six, eight months. The rainbow flag. The, flag, the yeah. fly, flying the flag. flag. Fly. And there were, a lot of, there were a lot of arguments from about, about why we ought not to fly the flag and one of the, the ones that came up most often from certain municipal representatives was we have a flag we have the canadian flag and it stands for everybody but i mean gay marriage has only been legal for what 10 years, 10 years now yeah um there are there are segments of our population that couldn't vote 50 years ago yeah we're not that far removed i mean, from, I mean from all of this. so 10 years ago the flag did not stand for gay people it did, it did not acknowledge their their rights what we are doing by by codifying this and making sure that, that these things are, are, are taught and that when we try and get children to recognize this is not just teach children not to be jerks to, to children and people who are different, but to recognize that people who experience those differences are represented and are welcome and part of the and part of our province and ostensibly our country. Right. Because the like, invisibility of it is really a huge problem. It's not even just acceptance or tolerance or whatever word you want to call it. It's being able to see yourself mm -hmm. in in the teachings or in books or movies or whatever yeah, there it are, is. There By are not being like able to me. see yourself is is a big a big shame right there. What's the natural conclusion? You're wrong, mm -hmm. right? There's something inherently broken about you. Yeah. I think we're gonna wrap up there. We're way over time, <laughs> but it was worth it. Uh, leave your comments below. Say hi to Jackie. Uh, random Nietzsche quotes are, of course, welcome. You can comment here on YouTube, or if you're terrified of YouTube comments, which does not seem unreasonable, uh, you can also go to the Concert Crucible site and comment there. We have a much safer space. <laughs> well, then YouTube. Yes, yeah. it's not a safe space. And we'll definitely have to get Jackie back to discuss grade 8. Because we definitely we didn't get to grade we, we totally skipped. skipped well, there's we whole, skipped the whole secondary eight. curriculum yeah. as well. Yeah. There's a whole secondary curriculum, but it'll all be in the show notes. Anyway, anyway thank, thank you very sometime much. sometime in the future, we'll get you back. Yeah. Anyway, I'm Jim. And I'm Ryan. Jackie. And we're signing off. Stay informed. <laughs>
When we had Andrew on, he hit me in the face. Yeah. <laughs> there was this moment where we went for like a triple high five, and he was like, Poof. "Felt like I should go." For what it. I'm saying is, you're you're basically our best podcast guest. <laughs> that I haven't slapped yeah. your face. You yet. haven't hit me in the face. <laughs>